You are now connected. Hey, Switchcord, it's Brian. We're ready for the call to be put through. Indeed. We finally got this written down. Hello, Mr. Moore? Yes. Hi, sir. It's Brian Fallon. How are you? Man, I never had it so good. How are you doing, my friend? Oh, great to hear. Great to hear. All right. Um, I have the vice president uh, here. The next voice you hear will be hers. And uh, we have uh, eight minutes set aside for this interview. I look Thank forward to for it. Time, Let's do sir. it. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Moore, it's Kamala Harris. How are you? I never had it so good. Good to hang out with you. How are you doing? I am very well, and it's good to be back with you. You've been well? Man, I have been doing so well. This is our third time getting the opportunity to encounter each other, but now it is crunch time. People are voting early, and you've been really on the campaign trail. How, like, how much more weight is it now running as president versus supporting as the vice president? Well, to your point, I definitely feel the weight of the responsibility. That's good. And there is so much at stake in these next 12 days. And part of it for me is really to make sure that folks understand their power mm -hmm. and to not be silenced and to not have, um, have other people convince them that they don't matter or that their vote doesn't matter because it really does. And when you think about issues like what we can do to fix our economy, in the way that you and I have talked about before, my longstanding agenda, which has been to increase access to capital for small businesses, including black-owned businesses and entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. My agenda that has been about dealing with an issue like maternal mortality, which you and I have discussed before, and raising up the fact that black women are three to four times more likely to die, and we need to deal with that travesty. Mm -hmm. My agenda that is about saying that we've got to enhance what we do in particular for our men and my national health initiative for black men which is about expanding preventative screening programs including for prostate and colon cancer this this is the weight of what i am feeling especially in these these next 12 days yeah 12 days to get the word out and remind folks of their power to make a difference that's so good hanging out with vp harris right now my third time having the opportunity to speak with her you know i've seen that evangelicals attempt to make donald trump god's man and uh, i'm totally not in agreement with that not even a little bit but how were you able to rally african-american church goers to find a tug of war to fight that tug of war from actually white evangel evangelicals who believe that that's god's man i've seen you come up with something called Souls to the Polls, where you've been challenging African-American churchgoers to really come to the polls. Talk a little bit about that. Well, let me start with this, Willie. I grew up in the black church. Mm. I grew up attending 23rd Avenue Church of God in Oakland, California. Let me find and out she called you. <laughs> <laughs> VP. And I grew up, you know, I was in the children's choir and attended Sunday school, and yeah. I, I, I learned and know that ours is a loving God yeah. who expects that faith without works is dead. Mm. That, you know, our faith has to be a verb and we have to put it in action. We have, to put, we have to be active with our faith in terms of living a life that is about lifting others up, doing justice, having mercy, and, and having grace. Yeah. And so, you know, souls to the polls is an initiative it's it's right now a partnership i have with so many of our pastors to to speak to their congregations about really faith in in the in the context of deeds and mm. that includes making sure that people vote because your voice is your vote and your vote is your voice and i do believe there's a real contrast between me and donald trump yeah. when we think about the teachings of scripture around the importance of of lifting up and, and, you know, whether it be taking care of the elderly, feeding the hungry, or just treating each other with a level of dignity and respect. Yeah. And instead, what you see from him is constantly calling people names, demeaning people. I mean, what he said most recently about black immigrants, legal immigrants in Ohio, and suggesting they were eating their pets, what we've seen at the beginning of his career, when as a, a landlord, he refused to rent to black families, what yeah. he did in taking out a full-page ad in the New York Times calling for the execution of five black and Latino innocent boys, not even young men. They were children. Yeah. 
and called for their execution, and they were innocent. And then, obviously, the first black president of the United States pushing that birther lie. Yeah. To yeah. suggest he wasn't born in the U.S. He's constantly trying to make people just d to divide the country and have people point their fingers at each other, and including most recently when he's talking about the enemy within yeah. and how he'll send the military after American citizens. So, look, I connect a lot of how I feel about it and how I think many people feel about it, especially those of faith. Yeah. So and understanding that there's a huge difference between me and Donald Trump on these issues. It and is. And I think that that, that matters. VP Harris, I got to ask you this. African-American males have been the most on the fence as it pertains to speaking and talking and voting for you. I'm an African-American male with four children. Groceries are up four times what it was four years ago. When it comes to economics, what do you tell an African-American male who's struggling to take care of his family? What type of economics do we have coming down the pipelines with your administration? Sure. So first of all, let me say that if you and I know, because we've talked about it even before I was running for president, yes. part of my agenda has always been to lift up the economic strength and well-being of the community and with a particular focus that I've been paying for years to black men. Mm -hmm. And again, long before I was running for president. And part of it is, you remember we talked about my economic opportunity tour, which was traveling yes. the country in places like Atlanta and Pittsburgh and Milwaukee to talk with folks about my work to increase access to capital through small banks. My work that has been about saying that we need to get rid of medical debt as something that can work against your credit score. My work that has been about what I will do, which is to create a $25,000 down payment assistance for first-time home buyers. Mm. My work that is about making sure that we extend what we can do around not only a track of getting people into home ownership, but building wealth in the community, mm. because I well know. Our men, our, the community, people in general, all Americans, yes, it should be a baseline that everybody has a job. And certainly yes. under our administration, we have reduced black unemployment to the lowest it's been historically. But that should be a baseline. It has to also be about a commitment, which I have, to allowing people to have opportunity to build wealth so they can buy the car they want to drive, so that they can own a home which is about intergenerational wealth, so people can achieve their dreams based on their natural ability to, to, to have dreams and to have ambition. And that's the spirit that I approach this work with, and, and I'm looking forward to being president with the help of your listeners, and I'm here to ask for their vote so that we can actually move on and move forward as a country and turn the page on this, this era, this Trump era that has been about fanning the flames of hate and division, Let's invest in the American people and the opportunities that exist to grow. Indeed. VP Harris, y'all make some noise. Listen, we are so excited about this election. We want to make sure that as many people under the sound of my voice, you get out there and you vote. Last thing, last 30 seconds, VP Harris, I always do this when I get the opportunity to sit down with you. Is there anything that this amazing group of people, 1.7 million people around the world who listen, is there something that we could be praying for during these last 12 days? pray for the, the the unification of our country. Good. Let's pray for strength. Let's pray for a collective spirit that is about knowing we have so much more in common than what separates us and yes. that, you know, a nation unified is stronger and it, it makes it stronger for each one of us. I, that's what I pray for. That's good. And I would, I'd be honored to have every one of your listeners join in that prayer. Indeed. Well, we appreciate you. I know that um, the time is up. If we can get one drop, if you can just say, is it is it legal to even say, hey, this is President Harris? You can't probably can't say that just yet, huh? I'm just thinking ahead. Well, let me just tell you why I'm not going to say it. Because yeah. we got 12 days to get it done. And until we get it done, I'm not saying that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. So can you just say this is VP Harris and you're, and you're watching Truth Talk? This is Vice President Harris and you are watching Truth Talk. Last one, this is Vice President Harris, and you're listening to the Willie Mo Jr. Show. This is Vice President Harris, and you are listening to the Willie Mo Jr. Show. I heard you smile. Listen, I'm praying for you. <laughs> Thank God for your staff. Don't let them work you too hard. God's
with you. I believe in you, okay? God bless you. I thank you so much. I look forward to talking again. Thank you so much. See you soon.